Let's take a look at the history of Linux and what it is. You see, you probably interact with Linux every day. Delta uses Linux for those in-flight TVs. Tesla uses Linux in their cars. Samsung uses Linux in their laundry machines. SteamOS is built on the Linux kernel. LG uses Linux in their TVs. And Android was built from Linux. And basically the entire internet is running on Linux-based operating systems. In the beginning, there were dinosaurs. And then there was Linus Torvalds. But before Linus, there was this thing called Unix, a family of operating systems created in the 1970s at Bell Lab. In the year 1991, a computer science student at the University of Helsinki was using an operating system called MiniX. MiniX was a Unix-like operating system created in 1982 by Andrew Tannenbaum and was designed to teach students about the principles and concepts of operating systems. Lydus decided he wanted to take MiniX and make it his own, a new operating system. The goal of this new operating system would be to be open for everyone and customizable. So we got to work developing the kernel for this new OS. Okay, let's stop there. What's a kernel? The kernel in a computer is responsible for managing system resources and facilitating the communication between hardware and software. The first versions of Linux were not operating systems at all, but just a kernel. It wouldn't be until later when the GNU or GNU project got involved that the Linux operating systems as we know them today would come to life. As Linus developed his kernel, he decided to announce his project to the world on a Usenet news group where he asked the community to give feedback and contribute to his project. This was the birth of the Linux kernel as an open source community driven effort. Before we continue, I make videos about IT related things, IT career advice, and my experiences in the industry. If you like this content, go ahead and like and hit the subscribe button. Back to the video. Also during this period, something called the GNU or GNU project was happening. Started by Richard Stallman, the GNU project was a project that wanted to develop a complete operating system composed of entirely free software. Stallman didn't like the restrictiveness of proprietary software and licensing. Do any of us? Yeah, I like this Stallman guy. He sounds pretty cool. Who doesn't want free stuff? The project created the GCC GNU compiler, a text editor called Emacs, and other tools called the GNU Core Utilities. But the GNU project was missing a kernel. So in 1992, Linus Torvalds released version 0.12 of the Linux kernel, but it included a file system text editor and support for the GNU compiler from the GNU project. As time went on, communities decided to take the Linux kernel and begin developing upon it. Slackware was created in 1993, Debian was created in 1993, and Red Hat Linux was created in 1994. It's hard to say exactly how many Linux-based operating systems exist today, but thanks to this series of events, Linux has found its way into almost everything we interact with today. Everything from phones, servers, TVs, refrigerators, payment kiosks, and many other things we interact with today run on Linux-based operating systems. 